Okay, we can start. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Vahati Samma Sambhutasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Vahati Samma Sambhutasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Vahati Samma Sambhutasa Good evening, dear friends in Brahma. We are starting to discuss about uh, Vyagra Padya Sutta. Sutta name Vyagra Padya. There was a young person when Buddha was dwelling in uh, Kholia city. Kholia. Janapada, that is the word that we have in the original discourse. This young fellow named Digajano Kolya Buddha. His name is Digajano. That young man came to see the Buddha and he asked a question. From the Buddha, whenever sir, we are lay people. We are enjoying with sensual pleasure. Can you give us some guidance to practice Dhamma? So we engage with so many activities, business, entertainments, all these activities are there with us. Take care in families. All the things are there as mundane person. So then, what kind of advice that you can give us to practice Dhamma, living in this sensual pleasure uh, lifestyle? What are the main things that we have to focus on this uh, lifestyle? There's a word that Pali we, we use, Ghinam Kama Bhogina. Ghinam Kama Bhogina. Ghinam means living in lay life. Kama Bhogina, enjoying with sensual pleasure. So this is the nature of uh, lay life. Enjoying with sensual pleasure. Living as a lay person, it is the nature of lay person, lay life. So that lay guy, young man, was asking from the Buddha, please give us some dhamma advice. How we practice? We are mainly focused on sensual pleasure, but we need something to practice as dhamma. So then, Buddha, with his compassionate mind. Deliver this sermon, which we call Vyagapadja Sutra. So then there are a few things that Buddha advised as a lay follower, as a lay practitioner who is focusing on sensual pleasure. Better to have these kind of thoughts, keep these things to develop your mindfulness. Practice noble lay called path. So, Tattaro me bikave gahapati dhamma, dikta dhamma hintaya sangmatati, tatame chattaro dhan sampada, ranka sampada, kalyani tata sam jivikata. There are four accomplishments. Whether you are focusing on sensual passage or not, it doesn't matter. But any kind of lifestyle you have, better to keep these or accomplishments as a goal for your life. Chattaro me bhikkavi gahapati dhamma dikta dhamma hitaya sangvartati. This word is very important. Dikta dhamma hitaya sangvartati. It means to be success in life, in your life. Definitely these four things are beneficial for you to be success in your life. Whatever the goals that you are maintaining, whatever the lifestyle that you are having, it doesn't matter. 
better to keep, better to focus on this accomplishment to be success in your life, in your life. So then it is very clear, this sutta particularly delivered by the Buddha, be success as a lay person. Be success as a lay person. Dear friends, living as a lay person, living in their life, if someone try to apply monk's life, living in lay life, it is kind of difficult thing. This is not easy. And same way other, living in a temple, if monks try to live as a lay person, it is more difficult. It is more difficult. No one accepts it. And living in lay life, if you are trying to live as a monk, in, the, in focusing on that sensual as a life, then there might be kind of uh, uh, unadjustable situation because the other might confuse. There might be some complaint from the close one. It might come with your brothers and sisters. If you have your parents, it might come from your parents. It might come uh, complaint from your partners. So there might be some kind of difficulty, but that's why you would the, the deliberately focus on this accomplishments as a lay person to be success in your lay life. Be successful in your lay life. So therefore, Buddha advice these qualities to increase ourselves as a lay person. What are the qualities? Putta Sampada, effort, develop your effort. Araka Sampada, watchfulness. Kalyanamitata, good friendship. And Samadhi Vitata, balanced livelihood. So these qualities are very important. For what? Why you want to develop your effort? What is the reason? For what you have to develop your effort? It's explained, important of any wealth, righteous way with the effort for well-being of this life. There are occupations a lady makes his living, farming, trading, cattle trade, trending, uh, archery as a king's man, so by any other craft. Those things we're talking about 2,600 years ago. Today, there are so many uh, things that you can do as a lay person. There are so many new occupations. During the Buddha's time, there wasn't any, anything about uh, uh, IT section, so Buddha did not talk about those kind of things eh? because everything was there with his wisdom. But today, there are so many, but I just mentioned here what, what the Sutta, Sutta mentioned, this course mentioned here, but there are so many uh, uh, occupations that we can find to apply. So, in here, very important thing is you should earn wealth. For what? Even yesterday I was mentioning about to live it, to, to live. No one giving you food, no one giving you your clothes, no one giving you medicine. No one providing shelter for you. So therefore, as a person who is living in lay life, you have to have effort to earn wealth. Using that wealth, yes, you can earn your basic requisites. There are four requirements which, which I just mentioned. Your food, your dwelling place, house, whatever the place to live, and uh, your medicine, when something happened to you, because this body is the place for all sicknesses. There is nothing any other place for the sicknesses. This body is the place. So therefore, time to time it might come 
and say hi. Sometimes they good advice, sometimes they like to stay with us, all the sicknesses. That's the nature. Therefore, we have to get ready for that as a wise person. How we can get ready in the, according to this modern society, having the insurance? Yes. And uh, earning some money to use in just in, uh, just in case in emergencies. So that is one of the uh, reasons you have to put effort to earn money. And other things, earning money is something that you can't live in your whole life. As a person, you have to earn money, but uh, in your whole life, you can earn money. There are so many other things to do. And uh, there, there should be a time to enjoy your life. There should be a time to uh, free from all other things and to develop your uh, insight, practice uh, your religion, uh, practice your other activities to be happy, to increase your rupture. There are so many activities. So therefore, when the time comes to earn money, you have to pay attention to earn money, benefits for yourself, to fulfill your requirements. That is one of advice given by the Buddha to this guy, Vyagapajan. This guy, uh, and here actually the sutta name is for him Digajar Koliya Buddha that sometimes we use as a Vyagapajan also. It doesn't matter. Uh, keep something in your mind. Buddha had that wise, something like this for this so and so guy. That's the important. So effort, develop effort. Without effort, is there anything that we can gain? Without putting effort, is there anything that we can gain? No, nothing. In Sanskrit, uh, there is a, a stanza in Sanskrit. Uh, even the lion, the lion is one of brave, the brave, bravest animal in the jungle. He eats flesh, killing other living beings. But lion, how much powerful he is, it doesn't matter. If he is not able to have any effort, he is not able to catch any of animals. Animals are not come to his mouth. He has to pay attention, he has to put effort, he has to uh, do something to catch animals. It says in Sanskrit literature, uh, therefore, whatever abilities that we have, if you don't have effort, all these abilities become useless for you. So therefore, ability, uh, effort is very important. That's why in 10 perfections, there are 10 perfections, we have to fulfill to attain enlightenment. These perfections are fulfilled requirements to attain a life. Some people are disagree, some people are agree about this, but according to my capacity, I am 100% agree. Without fulfilling those requirements, how we can achieve? For example, yes, you, you are willing to graduate from the college, before graduate from the college, you have to graduate from kindergarten and middle school, high school, and then you can graduate from university, the college. So therefore, in the same way, these 10 perfections are the bad requirements that we have to accomplish. Without accomplishing all these qualities through these 10 perfections, how we can attain a life? It is impossible things. Therefore, these 10 perfections are applications that we have to apply. So, that's why bodhisattvas who are willing to attain enlightenment, they have a goal to fulfill these 10 perfections. According to their research, even these uh, 10 perfections 
can be different. Sometimes some people, some practitioners practice 20 perfections. If they are willing to be specialized in enlightenment, likewise to become uh, chief uh, disciples, like, like uh, Sariputta and Moggalla. And there are 80 special chief disciples who have kind of leadership. If someone willing to come to that level, yes, they have to fulfill 20. And uh, Pacheka Buddha, they have to fulfill 20. Just to become Maham, 10 perfections is fine. To become a Samma Sambuddha, we have to fulfill 30. Parami, Upaparami, Paramatta Parami. So same thing in two different ways. Parami, the, for example, Dana Parami. The one is, the first one is Dana, practicing generosity. You can practice generosity in different ways. Practice giving away. Just kind of uh, like uh, your money, your food, uh, something like that. Your energy also benefits for others. That is the way that we can practice generosity. There is other way. You can practice generosity even giving away your body parts. Donating blood, donating uh, organs from your body. That is the second way. It's very kind of, is this, that step is not easy steps. It's kind of uh, development should be there with that person. Otherwise, he's not able to do that. The third one, in the last moment, last, last way, even you're ready to sacrifice your life, many people for others. You're sacrificing your life. This is the way how we should practice generosity to, act, to attain Samma Sambhu. So, according to your wishes, the way how we should practice all these perfections are different. But I want to give some picture about effort. That's why Bodhisattvas develop efforts as a parami, one of perfections. They develop efforts. So, each and everyone should have efforts without developing our efforts there is no way to be success in this life. So completely our success depending on our effort, effort and energy. These are very interconnected things, very important. So therefore, whatever the occupations you have, you should develop your effort to do things righteously. This is the word that Buddha used, righteous. That word explained, what is righteously mean? That word explained in another sutta, which we call Pattakamma Sutta. Pattakamma Sutta is explained, what is the righteous mean? Sedavakite dhammike baha balaparajite dhammike dhakalati. This is the way how it's explained, righteous. Sedavakite, spreading, uh, swelling, Swelling and Baha uh, Balaparchite, putting a uh, uh, kind of exercise through your whole body, hands, legs, mind, your brain, putting in exercise, doing something. But according to Dhamma, living according to Dhamma. Living according to Dhamma means respecting the natural law. You should do everything respecting the natural law. <clears throat> You're not supposed to go against the natural law. Whatever the lifestyle you have, whatever the occupation you have, mean basically you're not supposed to steal, you're not supposed to lie, you're not supposed to disturb anyone when you are engaging with your occupation. That is the basic things about natural law. So we need to develop our effort to do righteously our occupation, our uh, uh, duty, responsibilities. 
things that we can do. That is the meaning of righteousness. No harmful things for you and others. According to uh, Ambalatika Rahulova, the Sutta, there's a formula to recognize our uh, wholesomeness or unwholesomeness. Attabhyapadaya prasangartati, parabhyapadaya prasangartati, ubeabhyapadaya prasangartati. Attabhyapadaya, if there is something harmful to you, it is harmful. If there is something harmful to you and others, it is harmful. If there is harm harmful to both, it is harmful then you can start with you, whether it is harmful to you or not, whether it is harmful to others, whether it is harmful to you and others. Comparing this way, we can recognize whether you are engaging with wholesome activities or unwholesome activities. If it is harmful, it is harmful. It is not the wholesome. It is unwholesome. It is wicked. It is coming through wicked mind. It is coming through polluted mind. It is directly connected with the hatred, desire, and ignorance. So therefore, that kind of things, we're not supposed to develop our effort. Righteous means, uh, righteous means uh, without developing these unwholesome thoughts, developing your wholesomeness, you have to engage with some kind of activities. That is righteous things. So if someone can do that things, so that is very helpful in this very life to develop our inside, our spirituality. That's why Buddha advice to this young fellow. He's a lay person, he's a lay follower, focusing on sensual pleasure. Doesn't matter, Buddha did not ask, okay, stop all these sensual pleasure things. Buddha did not ask so. Buddha said, okay, focus on that. But to, uh, to accomplish all these sensual pleasures, you have to earn money. Without earning money, there's no way to accomplish any of these goals. So therefore, earn money like this. See, what Buddha mentioned in here, in this right effort, uh, kind of effort, right effort, what Buddha mentioned in here, First thing, base, base your life with the five precepts. It doesn't mention directly here. But in your life, there should be a guidelines for you to apply five precepts. Don't kill, don't steal, don't lie, don't adultery, don't use drugs and alcohol. These are the basic things. So, this is very important. I think uh, tomorrow, Bhante Ji is going to discuss uh, Dakkina Vibhanga Sutta. So in that Sutta, you're going to learn the way how you can practice generosity, particularly about the way how you can offer dana to Mahasanga, something, all these things. There is one quality that we have to keep in your mind. You can use to offer to Mahasangha the things that as well that you gain with riders. Because Dhammike Dhamma Latte, following Dhamma guidance, applying Dhamma to your day to day life, what kind of occupation you have, through that, that you earn something that is worthy to offer to Mahasangha, the Buddha, that is uh, qualified to offer. Those things are qualified. Otherwise, someone stealing from something, killing someone, taking something from there, these kind of uh, wealth is not suitable to offer Mahasangha because you can gain merits through that, but the, the wealth is not earned by righteous methods, righteous sleep. That is not good to offer to 
particularly uh, you you may get the chance to uh, hear about these things tomorrow the way how we should uh, earn things to occur practice generosity so therefore effort is they are very important effort is they are very important not only that life even just think about as a lay person at the beginning of our life we have to go to school we each and every one must go to school that is kind of requirements in this society civil society civilized society so therefore without effort are they able to continue their studies are they able to continue their educations no no way therefore effort is very important quality that we should do that we should do whatever you accumulate through your efforts righteously so then what we should do is watchfulness the second quality arakka sampada you have to protect it when you earn you're not supposed to leave alone to whatever is happening it doesn't matter no no that is not the way the buddha advised we have to protect the wealth that you already earn that is your obligation that is your duty why if all these i mean there are so many ways it can be vanished whatever the wealth that you accumulate develop that can be vanished within in few seconds with many reasons therefore we have to watchful about the wealth that you accumulated that is your duty this means the protection of wealth which is earned hard and righteous this is the case when i labor when a lay person has righteous wealth righteously gained how shall me the kings no thieves may come with this property of mine no for fire burn it no water sweep it away no hateful tears make of with it this is called being consummate in vigilance of watchfulness so therefore we have to protect from these kind of things what are these from the king from the king any time any governments can make a decisions okay all your wealth belongs to us any time they can make they have their they, they have their power for that you know so therefore we have to be careful we have to invest we have to i mean through our uh, effort that we uh, that we already earn this wealth we have to uh, use these things to protect as well as benefits for yourself otherwise it might be taken by the king or thieves there are a lot of thieves everywhere because we have concept that develop about wealth we have concept that concept come through our ignorance we we have given value for many things just for example think about gems gold money all these things have kind of uh, numbers value who create these values who create this value who create this value your ignorance your ignorance create this value according to paditya samuppada how we can get rid of our desire how then we can understand why we have to protect our wealth as well as why people greedy what is the what is why, why they are greedy for others wealth others earns and yes exactly we have greediness with us with other things that's part that is okay there is a uh, normal things but the greedy people always think about not only their things they are thinking of others things how i can take others things that's the nature of greediness 
So then, why they have that kind of greed? Because they are so blind. Their ignorance is very high. So according to no, uh, defending origination, it's ex explaining the way how we can get rid of that ignorance, uh, that greed. Without developing wisdom, there is no way to get rid of that uh, greed. People think practicing generosity, we can get rid of uh, uh, desire, greed, no. Without developing wisdom, there is no way to get rid of our desire. For example, I have two things on my farm. Piece of chocolate and piece of gold. Piece of chocolate yeah. and piece of gold. <laughs> I'm giving, offering to you, what would you like you can take from me? Who is coming to take my chocolate? No one coming to take this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you all ready to take my gold, piece of gold that I'm holding on my hand. When I go to pre preschool, three years, four years old kids are there. I'm asking, what do you like to take? Definitely they're ready to take a piece of chocolate. They don't care about the gold. What is the purpose of having gold for them? But their parents might like it, but they don't need that. Why? Why is that? Children don't need gold. Adults don't need chocolate. Particularly if you have diabetic, you, you never want to see it. Yeah. Why? Children, they like to have chocolate. You like to have gold. Why is that? This is the way how we label it. These labels created and stick thoroughly in our mind with our ignorance. How we create that ignorance? For example, gold. Gold is not everywhere. No? It's kind of rare material that we can take from earth. There are so many other things, but gold is very specific. So geography especially is ready to say, explain with the stories, oh, gold are rare materials. You, you are not able to find everywhere. Those are kind of special areas only, find, only can find. Therefore, it's a rare thing. Then connecting with economics, oh, if it is rare, price should be up. They are suggesting. Now, who is economics are suggesting? If it is rare things, demanding rare things, everybody likes to have rare things. Everybody likes to have rare things. Likewise, for example, about the Asian culture. Asian rich people like to keep uh, elephant tusks. Elephant tusks, they like to keep to show their, their wealth. That, that is, it's happening in India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Cambodia, all this. I think even Africa, I don't know about Africa. But they, they, they like to show. Why they don't like to keep their teeth their in their places? in their houses. They don't want to keep their teeth, but they like to keep an elephant. Why? What's the difference? Same thing, same material, but they don't want to keep their teeth. They want to keep elephant tusks only. It's value. You don't have any value for your teeth. You don't have any any kind of, uh, I mean, uh, no one coming to say, oh, it's wonderful, great. But seeing that elephant task, they said, oh, it's wonderful. Where did you find it? It's marvelous. So many explanations are there. 
were cancelled. Those cancelled create had created beliefs coming through ignorance, coming through ignorance. Same way, the geography special is ready to say about uh, that goal is real. Economics ready to say if it is real, it is demanding, so price up. You have to give good price for that up. So then price is very high. Normally, everybody are not able to buy those kind of things. Only the people who has a lot of money, they can buy. So then they can maintain their social status. I'm wearing this gold, this much gold, something like that. All these are concepts. Then there are some other people ready to create some stories regarding that gold. Gold is value because it has things, such things, and keeping related to your body, you can get these kind of benefits. Eh? And traditionally, in traditional country who believes uh, astrologies, they, they ready to say, okay, if you protect from mass case, you have to wear these uh, gold rings to protect from mass and some other uh, nine guys are there according to astrology. I don't know anything about astrology, but they say so. You can protect from them. You can protect from bad evil if you are wearing ring made by gold. So many stories are there. These stories, nothing based on any science, nothing based on any reality. They're complete, completely made by stories with using myth. At the end, we are supposed to get into the grassroots level. We are giving that piece of gold, uh, maybe yeah, we can give to the, the physics labs. Divide it, divide it into atoms. Now atoms turn that gold became atoms according to the Buddhist uh, four elements or eight elements. At that level. I don't know about physics, but I know about the Buddhist, a Buddhist explanation at that level. It means uh, elements level, there is no difference. Gold, silver, metal doesn't differ, doesn't have any difference. It doesn't have any difference. All are same. Then why people are willing to pay more to buy gold? than any other materials. Why? Because they are ignorance. They are ignorance. So this is the way how ignorance works. Therefore, that ignorance is the reason to steal, to kill someone, to take something Others from others without their permission. That ignorance. Ignorance is very dangerous. We do so many unwholesome things with our ignorance. If you can realize the nature, the reality of that goal, piece of goal, we never try to steal from someone else. We never. But if we have gold, we can use it at the, at the purpose. But we don't want to uh, steal or we don't want to do some other bad things uh, uh, without uh, following Dhamma, earning money, trying to buy gold. These kind of things are happening because of ignorance. But anyway, our wealth can, our wealth are in danger. King, Thief and uh, national, na natural disasters, likewise blood, all these things can be affected. Our wealth you, you gain through your right effort, righteously you gain. Therefore, you have to watchful. Watchful means you have to invest the way how it should do. 
yesterday I was just mentioning about the investment, the way how we should do according to the Sutta, Pattakama Sutta again. Actually, this is coming in the uh, uh, not Patakama Sutta, this coming in uh, Sigalabhadi Sutta. Eke Nagoge Bunjaya, Vekama Payoje, Chabuchantaridapiya, Apadasabhadi Sutta. This coming in Sigalabhadi Sutta, as I remember. So, you have to, watchful means, you have to invest. The way how it should be invest. Eke Nagoge Bunjaya, divided into four group your wealth, your income, and the one part of that income used to consume, to eat something, to have a place to live, and to wear clothes, to get medicine, all these things. These are basic requirements, requisites. To fulfill these requisites, use your wealth, one part of your wealth. Two part, invest. Invest means in here, two parts. Invest means in here, just think about the, not investment in the share markets or something. This is, this is not the meaning, but it might be, it could be, that's fine. It's not against the Dhamma. Investment is in here. Think about, you have to go to work by car, or by train, by bus, it doesn't matter. But according to your income, you can increase your facilities. If you don't have much income, so then you can get into train or bus. If you have much income to maintain, you have income to maintain a car, do it. That is the investment. Because comfortably you can go your, you can go your workplace. Peacefully, you can work there without thinking other schedules. If you are using a train, you have to work with the train schedules. So it depends on your income. So this is another investment. Two part invest mean invest your money to use in a bus, use in a train, use in a car, or whatever plane it might be, anything. Two parts you can invest. And if you have more, then you can go to other investments too. That's the, uh, there is two parts. Now, three parts are there. The fourth one, banking system. Put into the bank. Why? Just in case if there is emergency situations to use in that emergency, you have to keep some money to do that to us, to us. So this is the watchfulness. You are take care of your money righteously. This also righteous, the right way. And if there is something to do as a social work to help others, do it. Without doing anything, just keeping these things is not watchfulness. Keeping your mind, just keeping your money, counting every day, morning and evening, taking it, count it and keep there. Again, taking it and count it and keep there. That is not the watchfulness. Watchfulness means uh, putting away the way how it should do. The way how it should do benefits for yourself, benefits for others who are very close to you, and benefits for the society where you are living, benefits for all living beings. That is our obligation. This is the watchfulness means. Just earning money, keeping with you useless. For what? For what? So therefore, watchfulness is very important to put away according to the way that it should go. So watchfulness. To protect means that. Otherwise protects means keeping on your trunk. It is not the protect. It is not the protections. Because uh, if you make a thief, uh, then he will take everything. You don't have any opportunity to enjoy with that. You did not get any enjoyment there. 
because you just keep there. So that is not the way. So uh, watchfulness means put away the way how it should do. Third one, good friendship. This says the associate good friends who explain the Dharma, which is useful for this life. He talks with them, engage them in discussions, so emulates, communicate, uh, uh, consummate convictions, consummate virtue, consummate uh, generosity, and consummate uh, discernment. This is called admirable friendship. So we actually last few days, we were talking about Kalyanamit, the good friends. Good friends are very important in our life. Therefore, in this particular sutta, Vyagapadya sutta, the Buddha advised to that young fellow, you should have good friends. Good friends means always they should live according to the Dhamma. According to the Dhamma means of, oh, only the practitioners of Buddha's teachings. No, that is not the meaning of practice, Dhamma practice. Dhamma practice means who are respecting others, who are living with compassion, no jealousy, no harmful thoughts. These people are the people who are living according to Dhamma. They respect the natural law. So associate these kind of good friends because as mundane person, there might be so many mistakes from us. There is a project. We are not fulfilled. They are, we are not uh, perfect. Still living with defilements means no one is, no one can guarantee you as a perfect person. There are so many mistakes. So when something happening from us, there should be a person who can come to us with compassionate mind to tell us, dear friends, this is wrong. Don't do it again. With compassionate money, not, not having any other second plan. Directly with compassionate mind, that person should come. That is the nature of good friends. Dear friends, not only us, even the practitioner like Bodhisattva have that kind of uh, uh, situations. Our Buddha, Sakyamuni Gautama, before become Buddha, while he was practicing as a Bodhisattva, he born in Vipankara Buddha's time, as I remember. Vipankara uh, Buddha's time, oh, later, later, not Vipankara Buddha's time, later on, another Buddha's time, he born. Uh, his name was uh, Gatikara. Gatikara. And he had a friend. They both are good friends. One day, somehow, they, they, their place, their village where they were living, the Buddha came to that, that village. Gatikara's friend, Jyotipala, his name is Jyotipala. Jyotipala said to his friend, because he's a Kalyana Mitta, good friend of him, by the way, the Buddha arrived to our village. Let's go to see the Buddha. And the first time he said, okay, okay, later. Later. These days are very busy. Let's go another day. Then, now, the, the, this, happened, this happened the person who is uh, fulfilling bodhis, as a bodhi, bodhisattva, fulfilling in his perfections. So already he already uh, named by the another Buddha previously, one day he is going to become Buddha. All these titles are there. Even though in this time, somehow, he was refused to see Buddha the first time. And again, Yodhipala came and suggested, Let's go to see the Buddha and listen to that. He refused it. Third time, his friend is a good friend. Therefore, he thought, okay, today, even though my friend is not agree with me, 
I'm taking him to the Buddha. I will do it definitely. He determined himself, himself. And then he went to his friend and then he said, no, 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 not today, another day. No, 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 you can't refuse today. Let's go. He hold his neck in here and take it to the Buddha. <laughs> take it to the Buddha. And in front of the Buddha, he said, Venerable Sir, Yotipala said about his friend Gatikara, Venerable Sir, this is my good friend. He's very innocent, very gentle, humble person. But unfortunately, he is not like to come to see you and listen to you. He was refusing many times. Today I took him here by pause. And then looking at him, analyzing his life, the Buddha said, oh, this guy will be Buddha one day in future. That is Sakya and Gautama Buddha. So now you can see good friends are very, how valuable for our life. There might be mistake. We might track out. So to get support, we need good friends. We definitely need good friends. So good companion is wonderful blessings. Good companion is a wonderful blessing for our life. Therefore, friends, create more and more good friends. You can't find good friends outside first. Be a good friend to you yourself, and then you can create good friends from outside. Be a good friend to yourself. Listen to your mind. Be a good friend. Analyze your mind to reduce your unwholesome thoughts to be a good friend. And then being a good friend yourself, then you can, being a good friend, you can find many good friends from outside. That is the second thing. The first thing, you have to be a good friend yourself. So good friendship is very important in this practice very important in this practice. Not just only for lay life. It is beneficial for both lives in our spiritual journey. So the last one, balanced livelihood. Balanced livelihood, this is completely about our income and expenses. It's completely about our income and expenses. As a lay, lay, lay person, you have to earn money to accomplish your basic requirements, requisites. Therefore, when you have some kind of income, you have to balance it without spending money in unnecessary way. Spend money in useful way, benefits for yourself. There are a few things, sir. Uh, uh, that Buddha mentioned uh, five things that we have to do Raja Bali, Devata Bali, Ubhupeta Bali, Nyati Bali. Uh, these are the obligations. Uh, Raja Bali means to pay taxes. Raja Bali. Devata Bali means to do religious activities. Religious activities. Upupeta Bali means two kind of services who departed from us. Nyati Bali means to help our relatives, neighbors, friends. That's Nyati Bali. All these are the obligations that we have to do, we have to fulfill as human beings in this very life. This is our responsibility. Because we born to this world not just to earn money and eat and consume all these things to and finish. We born to this world as human beings to increase our humanity. The way how we can increase our humanity, practicing generosity, observing precepts, 
and practicing meditation. These are the three activities that we can apply to increase our humanity. How long you, we, we, do, we live, it doesn't matter. How much humanity we, we can develop, that is most important. Humanity is most important. You might live two years, three years, five years, it doesn't matter. If you can fulfill your human quality into top of level, that would be the most important thing. Not the quantity, quality is the most important in this way life. Therefore, balanced life will directly help us to balance our wealth, benefits for yourself, benefits for others, benefits for others. So, in this sutta, to live according to the advice given by the Buddha, there are four qualities that Buddha advised to develop as a lay person. Samasraddha, Samasila, Samachaga, Samapanya. Faith, virtue, charity or generousness, and wisdom. These four qualities are important in this very life. Faith. Faith is kind of blind, but in here, faith means sadha, sampada, mean that's Pali word. It's not just blind faith. The faith should connect with wisdom. Faith will connect with wisdom. That is the faith that Buddha, Buddhism talking about. Not the blind faith. Not to believe. This faith should develop to develop our confidence. Confidence. That is the meaning of faith in here. Not to believe. Believe is kind of a blind thing. This is something to develop our confidence. If you want to live harmoniously, developing loving friendliness, compassion, all these qualities, there should be faith. If you don't have that faith, then it is not easy to live harmoniously, happy, peacefully, righteous. So therefore, faith is confidence in here, which is very helpful to live peacefully, happy. And virtue sealer is one of base in our life. Each and every society we have law and order. Each and every civilized society, they have law and order. For what? Comfort of yourself. Comfort of yourself and for your uh, happiness, for your happiness. If you are not comfortable in your life, you don't have happiness. When you are comfortable, you have happiness. So therefore, each and every law, laws and orders created by the societies, Citizens of the society to be comfort and happy. That is the main goal. Same goal with this virtue, sila, sampada. Sila means respect the natural law. Living according to respecting the natural law. That is the same means. Taming your word and actions. We can talk if you know the language. You can talk using that language. If you know many languages, you can talk many things using many languages. But there should be a purpose. When you talk, there should be a purpose about that talk. That purpose should connect with 
compassion and loving friendliness then whoever listening to that uh, words there are some benefits for that because these words are not just mere words the those words are coming through compassion and loving friendliness there is no any harmful thoughts harmful effect there therefore listeners can get some benefits through these words to use our words in this way we have to tame it without taming it is impossible so therefore we have to tame and then we know the words that we should use that word we should not use we know that because we are aware of that so this is seen and charity chaga sampada it is also kind of generousness chaga means without chaga charity this nature in your life there is no way to develop any kind of relationship in this society the family is the base one family is starting with two people husband as wife so these two people to build up good strong relationship they have that quality charity charity chaga if they don't have how they can share anything they can't share anything if they don't have that qualities with them chaga what what are they sharing they share in their compassion they share in their equanimity even though they are there are so many mistakes done by us but we can bear those mistakes thinking about other benefits that is that is equanimity compassion loving friendliness sympathetic joy all the qualities are there with the chaga so chaga is one of great quality that we have to develop as practice and not only practice as a human being as a human being so each and every relationship that we can build up for a strong level with these qualities that's why we would advise to develop these qualities jana sori diga jana and the last one is wisdom panya what is for panya anya is thinking ability who can think deeply widely that is panya so i already discussed all these things then i would like to go to the panya wisdom or intelligence which mainly help us to overcome suffering and attain liberation from uh, defilements is highly praised in buddhism the main cause whether we are happy is the level of our wisdom how real success depends on how much we have achieved wisdom our happiness depending on our wisdom our happiness depending on our wisdom for example there are so many reasons to be unhappy there are so many reasons to be unhappy how much all these reasons that we can tolerate happiness remain with us that much what are the reasons to be unhappy is an even this moment there is a reasons to be unhappy what the hell this monkey is continuing it's not to finish in this talk is creating you are unhappy thoughts you know but if you can bear it okay it's okay he might take five more minutes that will end then you are tolerant you are you are bearing it then you don't have harmful thoughts yourself and my to toward me see there the reasons are there everywhere this 
Fan might be reasons to increase your unhappy thoughts. No? This sunlight might be reasons to develop your unhappy thoughts. There are so many reasons it generate itself to develop your unhappy thoughts. So panya, wisdom is the solutions to manage, to tolerate, to control our defilements or unwholesome thoughts. Panya is the wisdom. Panya is the wisdom. Wisdom is the solutions to control all these unwholesome thoughts. Without wisdom, there is no way to control our unwholesomeness. So completely our unwholesomeness, we can control through our wisdom. Wisdom has been compared to Chet, Panya, Narana, Ratana. Wisdom brings purification, Panya, Parisujjati. These are kind of uh, uh, very popular sayings, sentences in Buddhist literature. This is no other bright light, bright light like wisdom, Nati Panya Sama Adha. Wisdom is used in several terms in Pali language such as Samma Ditti, Panya, Amoha. These are the synonyms for wisdom. Wisdom should be increased from beginning till the end to maximum level of the path of enlightenment. So, wisdom, now you might have idea about wisdom what his wisdom is. Wisdom is the main goal of the Buddhist practice. And we practice teachings of the Buddha to gain wisdom. That is our liberation. Without wisdom, there is no way to liberate. We usually experience through our senses such as eye, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. When objects such as form, sounds, smell, taste, uh, uh, reach senses, we experience about the world. The nature of this experience is arising and the moment and instant disease at once. Whatever we experience through six senses by aggregates arises at that moment, also they immediately cease. Five aggregates are form, rufa, feelings, vedana, perception, sanya, Mental formation, sankhara, and consciousness, vijnana. These five things arise together and cease together. They, they cannot be divided. We learn them by intelligence. These five aggregates, six internal senses or external objects, are not permanent. They arise with the conditions at that moment and they cease immediately when conditions separate. However, because of our ignorance, we think they are permanent. Wisdom is against of this delusion. The nature of all condition is that not being occurred in the past comes to an occurrence. Being occurred at the present will not come to the future occurrence. It means if we experience something now, it was not happening in the past in the same way like now. So this is the result of wisdom. If someone attained Nibbana means that person's thoughts would be like this. This is the meaning of realization. So this realization comes through the wisdom. So in Vyagya Pancha Sutta, the Buddha explained the mundane person, how can develop, how can increase his mundane lay life up to supramundane level or up to end of sansari journey. It's explained in this particular sutra. It is completely about Noble Eightfold Path. Noble Eightfold Path. Vyakrapadja Sutta is completely about 
noble eightfold path. But it does not mention, it does not mention about Samma Aditi, it does not mention about Samma Sankarpa, none of these things, but all these things are there. Uttana Sampada effort is not there if you don't have Samma Aditi, right, right vision, right view. There is no way to develop your Arakka Sampada Kalyana Mithata if you don't have Samma Sankarpa. Samma Sankarpa. Right concept, right thoughts. So all these are interconnected. We can see the Buddha explained Noble Eightfold Path in different ways in Naganti in Vyagapadya Sutta. So uh, Vyagapadya Sutta is look like talking about lay life, day to day life, the way how we can uplift that life into supramandin level. So this is Vyagapadya Sutta. It's very applicable for our day to day life, you can apply, you can taste it, you can see the results. Thank you very much.